the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. We have a very special guest for you today from my hometown of Houston, Texas. We got Mickey Bateau with NPR Group uh, via EXP. How are you, Mickey? I'm good, Tim. Thank you for the invite. And yeah, Houston's great, man. Uh, yeah, each town. I love it, man. I I, I can't tell you. I've, I've lived in Texas most of my life. I don't now. I live in West Palm Beach, Florida, as most of my listeners know. But yeah. Uh, Houston's my my home base and uh, Houston and Dallas. So yeah, Houston and Dallas. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. Love, love talking to someone uh, from the great state of Texas. Before we get into like you know what you're doing today and things like that and talking about the greatness of Houston, let's talk about you. Tell okay. me, were you like the young young man of five years old tugging at your parents' pant leg saying, "How do I become a realtor?" Were you like the rest of us where we later in life just kind of fell back into it? So it's, it's interesting. It's a good question. So, you know, when I uh, first became a realtor, it was roughly about 10 years ago now. Okay. And I did it out of two things, uh, necessity and curiosity. So the necessity was that I was running two businesses. I had two small businesses and I needed a little bit more avenue of income. So that, that was a necessity part of it. And the curiosity was that ever since uh, I graduated college and I went into banking, real estate always was something I really wanted to get more info on just kind of learn more about it and, and so on so i ended up you know procrastinating that side of it since like 2009 i was like okay i got to get my license i want to learn more never ended up doing it because the business is kind of just took my time but then when 2013 rolled around i said you know what enough is enough let's get the license and let's just get our foot in the door and see what happens nice nice and so i guess the rest is history now did you yeah. did you have a mentor or anybody that you found you said hey I, you know i know this man, lady, uh, whomever. Uh, and I really, I'm going to go to them. And that's how you found EXP or I guess, how'd you find your way to EXP? I guess that's the best way to ask that. Sure. Sure. If you don't mind, I'll start with the mentor question. Um, because yeah, yeah. Go ahead. it kind of led me to EXP, but basically when I got, you know, the license, I started interviewing some brokerages and one of them, the owner of it was a friend and I knew him. So he put me in touch with a gentleman who was running a team at the time and was a really good, candidate for for me and him to kind of link up together. So we ended up talking, we interviewed and he ended up saying, you know, I'd love you on the team. And I said, you know what, I'd love to be on your team. You know, so we linked up pretty quickly. He ended up being a, not only a mentor, but a guiding light, like a big brother figure. And he and I worked together for pretty much my whole career. Recently, we lost him. So he passed away recently. But before that, it was him and I, and I, I built up my relationship with him. I started with his, on his team. I was just one of his team members. And then I eventually became his business partner. And we eventually went to EXP together as business partners. And so we ran the team together at that point, you know, and that was in 2019 when we um, joined EXP. So since then, you know, we, we kind of transitioned it away from what we were doing and we jumped onto EXP together and uh, we loved the ride that we were on at EXP. And, and it was, it was, you know, not to take credit or anything, but it was, it was me that kind of pushed him to, to really look at EXP seriously. Right. I researched the company for probably 10 months before I made a decision to approach him and say, Hey man, I think we really need to look at this company. Um, they're going places that you and I really want to be. And yeah. so eventually he, he agreed. He said, okay, fine. You've been pressing me enough. Let's, let's make the jump. And we love the ride after that. So it was cool. Fantastic. That's a great Thank story. You. Mickey, Thank you. let me ask you this. So we've, we've, we've heard about how you kind of got started. Let's talk about today. Um, yeah. Is there a team? And if so, uh, how do you build that team? If Are you a solopreneur? And if you're a solopreneur, how do you run that? Tell me what that so, looks like. So we ran the team together when we came on. After his passing, you know, I had the opportunity to just dissolve the team or take it over. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I took it over and I renamed it, rebranded it because um, his original team name went to his sons. And so I, I made sure that, and, and the cool thing is EXP has this whole legacy thing. Right. His son has taken his dad's spot. And so I help his son now, his younger son, his middle child. And so the, the team name went to them. And so I created my own team. So I run a team of 12 agents now. 
and we're in the Houston and Dallas area, and we're going to be expanding to uh, San Antonio and Austin soon. Um, I kind of have a footprint there now, but right. I'm going to eventually have team members in both of those areas. So I run the team totally by myself. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. So you're going to take over Texas, huh? <laughs> That's the end goal. <laughs> That's the goal, right? Right. Yeah. And, and enjoy the ride on the way for sure. For the sure. way I look at goals is they got to be lofty, you know, yeah, they That's have to be gotta, right. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that. Um, yeah. You know, what is the what is the vision board look like? What is you know, let's put on our prognostication hats and where's Mickey going to be over the next one, three and five years? Oh, great question, Timothy. Uh, a friend of mine, Nicole Goulet, she's uh, actually uh, with a title company that we work with. And she pushed me this year to have my own vision board. I didn't really have one before. I had it in my mind, but never like put it on paper or anything right. like that. So I started taking these interesting screenshots of stuff I kind of wanted, you know, for this year and the next three years and five years. So I'm putting that together. But basically, I want to hopefully triple my production this year, my production in, in uh, real estate. And um, that's been on the vision board for 2023. I know, I know times are tough, but hey, you know, like I said, you got to have lofty goals, you know, yeah, so sure. want to triple it. And I want the team to produce as well. And a lot of my team members are new, so I'm kind of, you know, okay. coaching them as well. And so I'm hopeful that they will really hit their, hit the ground running this year. And so those are the lofty goals for this year. Three years down the line, I want to take more of a backseat and, and help somebody run my team, you know, designated okay. little guys on my team to really take over the day to day, if that makes sense. Right. And, and five years down the line, hopefully I want to, you know, be on an Island with my wife and just, uh, you know, say hello once in a while to my team and, and have it running like a well-oiled machine. Nothing so that, wrong with that at all. Goal. That's the end yeah. goal. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. So let me ask you this, Mickey, on a on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. I don't like to say, you know, we all have problems. We all have obstacles, right? Because we're yeah. we're we're solution guys, right? That's the business that you're in. You're, you know, you're yeah. gonna come up with a solution for people. So being that, what hurdles do you run into on a day-to-day -day basis that if I came out to, to Houston and you and I sat down and you know had a drink, had lunch, whatever it might be. And I said, hey, I can take care of that problem for you or that hurdle for you. What would that be? The biggest hurdle is consistency. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've relied heavily on and I've been blessed, not just relied, but I've been blessed with, uh, you know, referrals and repeat business for my clients that I've worked with in the past. Right. Um, for this year, I took an approach of getting more consistent in, um, you know, reaching out to my SOI and also developing new relationships. And, and so that's been the biggest hurdle for me recently, but, you know, um, not to use it as a crutch or anything, but, but since my partner left, uh, you know, it kind of was the transition took a while. It took me almost a year and a half to kind of just get everything to where I, I want it the way I want it. And so this year is where we are now. We are, we're running on, on the, on the path that I really want to run on. And so yeah. those challenges that came about was mainly consistency. I kind of wore too many hats and, you know, and it kind of, that, that's where you can lose focus, right? So I made sure that uh, I have a little bit more of a vision and, and a, you know, tunnel vision this year. Yeah. Going forward. yeah, that's fantastic. You're going to keep your eye on the prize, you know? Yeah, for yeah. sure. So tell me this, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and act like I don't know anything about Texas or Houston, okay. even though I spent 30 some odd years there, but uh, tell me extol the greatness and you can cover the whole state. If you just want to cover Houston, that's fine. Sure. But, but, but why Texas, why live there? And what's the greatness of Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, I could go on and on, but talk about Texas a little bit. Certainly. So, you know, I got lucky when I moved here, I came here when I was nine and I came okay. here from India. So I was born in India. I came here. And I didn't know anything other than Texas, you know, and, and it's kind of in my blood now. But, right. you know, what, what I really learned growing up is the diversity that's here is mm -hmm. amazing. You know, you can leave you can lead a really good life here. And um, what I've seen in other other states and so on and, and not to you know talk down about it, but it's just different here. The uh, flexibility you have of going whatever you want to do in your life, you know, career and, and also Texas believe it or not, and, and it's so huge, but, but it's growing, you know, it's, it's just growing. And, and there's so much, you know, landscape here that is turning into residential and commercial. And it's been amazing to see the, the house that I'm in right now, literally where I'm sitting used to be farmland two years ago. Right. You know? And so it's just, it's just kind of growing. And I want to be part of that, you know, not only for real estate, but also just living here, you know, I want to raise my children here in the future and that kind of thing. So 
I love Texas for everything it offers to anybody that wants to come and, and really see, you know, what life would be like here, you know, and we talk about, I came from India, right? So I came from a place where you came to America for a better, you know, life and, and that kind of thing. Texas definitely has provided that for, for me and my family, you know, and, and I grew up with a small business mentality, you know, and so we were, we're blue collar in that sense. And right. so I love the fact that, you know, any generation can strive here. And right. so Texas is growing. Houston's growing. Austin's growing. San Antonio and Dallas are growing. And, and we saw a big influx of people coming into the state, especially after COVID, you know, right. and so it really brought attention to the state. And uh, last year was crazy. You know, it was crazy. Right. It was a good crazy, you know, and I loved it. Yeah. So I'm hoping for a continued, you know, path uh, and growth of the state. So I'm excited. Yeah, and, 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 and if, you know, and I've, I've only been away from Texas for, for a bit since, uh, you know, 2008, 2009. Uh, but, you know, it was my, my home and my wife and I married there, kids all born there, you know. So they at least get to say they're Texans. And the only yeah. one that doesn't is my wife born in New York. And we're like, okay. eh, oh. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know, and it, it's still affordable. I mean, yeah. and, I, and I don't mean to displace it versus like where I live, West Palm Beach, which is not <laughs> affordable, you know, in, in, in my opinion, you know, price, price yeah. per square foot. Sure. Uh, but it always amazes me that Texas, Houston, Dallas, no matter where, is always just affordable in what you can get. And I know so many of the people, and I'll say it so you don't have to, so many of the people moving from California and places like that that are like, yeah. you know, I had to get out of there or I wanted to get out of there or my tech company is moving here, you know, are shocked and amazed at how affordable it is. It's know? crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So you, it's really kind of a utopia. Now we get a lot of that here too. I mean, we get a thousand people a day move to Florida. And Florida is another parallel yeah, place, but, to, it, to but it's just crazy, not affordable. I, I don't, <laughs> you, you have a lot more land. Uh, we have a lot more theme parks. <laughs> There are a lot more theme parks. I think that's part. <laughs> you need to come visit Orlando. <laughs> right. Everybody's got to come to the theme parks. Everybody wants to go to the beach. Everybody thinks when they move to Florida, I'm just going to live on vacation. And I go, it doesn't work like that. You know, right. they're right. all vacationing while you're working. So true. Like, how would someone get in touch with you? You know, maybe they're out on the West Coast and they are moving out. Uh, sure. Maybe just in any, any one of those cities that you're in, they want to, you know, it's time to, to move up, move down, whatever it is. Sure. Uh, maybe even better they want to join your team oh yeah love it um i would love that i'm expanding the team you know and we're we should have a new team member coming on board soon so i'm actually creating a commercial division as well on the team now because i do commercial real estate as well and so would love to expand it and so i would love would you like me to share like my phone number or, or email or anything like that all of the above okay great my phone number is 832-244-6830 I am a serial texter. So if I don't, if you don't get in touch with me, or if I'm in a meeting or something, I'm going to text you right back and, and we'll, we'll get in touch. My uh, email is very easy. It's Mickey, M-I-C-K-E-Y at MPR.group. And the MPR stands for Mickey Patel Realty. So it's Mickey at MPR.group. Thank you so much, Mickey, for being on the program today. I look forward to catching up with you over the th next three, six, nine months and uh, kind of see how things are going. Uh, Timothy, I appreciate the invite and I'd love to come back on and hopefully when you're down here, call me. We got to have some coffee. We'll do. I'll, I'll take you up on that for sure. We'll do some Texas bourbon or something, but yeah, oh, I love it. Down I love, and barbecue. <laughs> and barbecue. Cause I'm telling you in Florida, there's barbecue. No yes. Oh yes. Have a great weekend, Mickey. You too, my man. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.